All right, so uh, these notes, we are going to start talking about uh, direct variation. Um, there is going to be a lot of information in, in this video. I am going to try and go quick so it's not too long, um, but just please at any point in time, pause, review um, if need be, because um, there is going to be a lot in here. Okay, a central question is going to be how do you determine direct variation in tables, equations, and graphs. So um, we're going to learn about direct variation, the equation for it, and then just how can we figure out if something is showing us direct variation or not. Um, first thing though that you know we need to do here is we got to actually talk about like what is what is it what does direct variation mean? So direct variation, um, it's two quantities, x and y. Um, two quantities show direct variation when they can be written as y is equal to kx. Oh, don't know what that is. Um, that this is extremely important. So I'm actually going to highlight this in my notes. Y equals kx. We're going to write this down later on too. Um, but it's extremely important. And where k, k, that letter k, it's called the constant of proportionality. So this K right here is the constant of proportionality. Um, K, okay, K is kind of what we have been calling unit rate. So in problem uh, for direct variation problem, so when I've asked you to find a unit rate, what you're doing right there is you're actually finding the constant of proportionality. We just haven't called it that. that. Um, so kind of, how, do you, how do you find? So one of the things you're going to have to do is to um, find K. Um, and what K is, if I use, so we're going to be using this equation, Y equals KX a lot. If I want to know what the value of K is, okay, the goal here, okay, is to, get k alone, just like if it, if I was asking you to get x by itself or whatever, right? Um, so this is saying, this is the same as y is equal to k times x. So if I want to get k by itself, I divide each side by x, because I can, I can divide by x, okay? Just like if it was a number, x goes away. Um, so y over x is equal to k. Now, I kind of showed you how, how I solved it, but this right here is extremely important. So highlight it, star it, whatever you, you know, want to do right here because the fact that we know to find k, we're going to need to take y and divide it by x, and it has to be y over x, okay? You k is not equal to x over y. Okay, so it it does have to be y over x, not x over y. That is extremely important. Okay, so um, kind of just like what you wrote in the essential question, you you must be able to write direct very the direct variation equation. Um, you must be able to like you know see direct variation. Um, from a table, equation, and graph. And these notes are going to go over um, all three of these forms. All right. The first one we're going to look at is the table. Okay. Um, so the main question is, do, you know, do these two examples, do they show direct variation? Well, in order to answer yes, okay, remember this is, the table. 
Um, in order to answer yes here, you need to see is y over x, because remember, that is our k value, that's constant proportionality. You need to see if y over x is the same for each ratio in the table. So I am going to look here and I'm going to say, all right, is this y over x, which is 4 over 1, that equals 4. For this one, 8 divided by 2, that also equals 4. And then this one, um, 12 over 3 equals 4. So due to the fact that each one of these equals 4, okay, then yes, they show direct variation, and my k is 4. My constant proportionality is 4 for each one of those. Um, when I come to example 2, okay, well, 10 divided by 2 is 5. When I look at this guy, 6, and then remember that 0.6 is repeating forever over 3. Um, then... Uh, that guy is actually going to be equal to 2.2, .2, repeating forever. And then this right here, 5 over 4, um, that equals 1.2. So here, each one of these has a different value. So the answer is no, because I can't say what k is. I don't have a value for k, because every single one of those is different. All right. Now, we're going to look, um, I'm going to write down a couple equations, and we're going to look at the um, equation format. So, in order for you to answer yes, when it comes to an equation, okay, um, the equation has to be written, has, you have to be able to write, write it where it's y equals kx, okay? Um, and you may have to do some work to get... Um, oh, not K, I meant Y. You may have to do some work to get Y by itself. All right, I'm going to write down three um, different equations right here. So that's going to be our first one. That is going to be our second one. And that will be our third. Okay. So I look at example one. Remember, I want to see is it y equals kx. Well, when I look at this guy, I have a y. I have, I can make this k. I have x. But I also have this plus 3. So because of that plus 3, you would write no. It's not direct variation. You cannot have a plus 3. It literally is just y equals kx. You can't have anything added or subtracted onto the end. So, um, no. Due to the plus 3. Alright. Um, example 2. So, I have a y equals... I have a k and I have an x. There's nothing else after it. So I could look at it and say, all right, well, k is equal to negative 3. So, yes, this is direct variation. I don't have anything added or subtracted at the end. It's just y equals my k value times x. Um, all right, last one. So this one I'm talking about, sometimes you might have to do a little bit work, because if I look to see y is not by itself, I have y plus 1, and I want... The equation is a y equals. So I can't look at this until I have y equals. So I need to get y alone. So I'm going to minus 1 from each side. So I get y is equal to x minus 1. Well, when I do that, I have this minus 1. And if we look from example one, I know that, that, that the answer to that is then no. 
because direct variation does not have any pluses. Does not have anything added or subtracted um, to it. All right. Last one we're going to look at is uh, graphing. So how can we tell based off of a graph um, if it's direct variation? So for it to be direct variation, um, first of all, the line must be straight. It has to be a straight line. And it has to go through the origin. Remember, the origin is 0, 0. Okay? And it's where our two lines intersect. So I am going to draw... Uh, oh. Hold on. I'm going to redraw that guy. I'm going to draw three lines. Okay. So here are my three graphs. So let's take a look. So if I look at this guy, here's my origin. Okay. The line, um, it doesn't go through the origin. So the answer is no. Because it does not go through that purple dot. I looked at example two. Well, here's my origin. It goes through it. So yes. And example three, it does go through the origin, but it's curved. And remember, it has to be straight. So the answer is no. So I'll say, um, here I'll say, doesn't go through origin. And here, it is not straight. Um, so yeah, it has to, so this one's straight, but doesn't go through the origin. This one goes through the origin, but it's not straight. This one has both, so that's why we say yes, it does have to be both straight and going through the origin. All right, we're going to do kind of like a big application problem. Just to show you, like, this is the kind of stuff we're going to be working towards, what I want you to get to. Um, so first of all, I know it's proportional because it goes through that origin. So I know it's proportional. I know it's direct variation because it goes through the origin. So to find the k value, you need to, um, you can pick any point and just do Remember, k is equal to y divided by x. So I can pick any one of these points. So I'm going to pick the middle one just because. So my remember, y, if I'm looking at a point, it goes x, y. So my y is the second number, 120 divided by 2 is equal to 60. So k equals See, and I could do it with any of those three, and I would get the same answer. By using the k value, write the equation. So remember, we know it's direct variation, so I'm going to put y equals kx. And instead of k, I'm just replacing k with 60 with what I found before. This is literally the equation, y equals 60x. So whatever you find k, you just substitute it in. Um, so how far will you travel in 9.5 hours? Well, hours I see down here. So hours is an x value. So once I have my equation, y equals 60x, I can just say, okay, hours is an x value. So y is equal to 60 times 9.5. Y is going to equal to 570. And Y is distance traveled. Oh, it's not miles. If I see here, here's my unit kilometers. So 560 or five, five, 570 kilometers. Um, how far will we So now here, because it's talking about kilometers, this is a y value. So instead of y, put in 2,000 is equal to 60 
x. Get x by itself by dividing each side by 60. So x is going to be equal to 33.3 through repeating in x is hours. Okay, so that's, that's it. There is a lot of information I just threw at you. Um, very kind of quickly, we're going to be working on this in the next couple days. So come to class with questions.